Hey guys, what's going on? So I've gotten plenty of requests about the Falcon and could we give them a walk around and a peek at the Falcon? So that's my buddy Jesse right there, Jesse Davis. Where are you on Instagram? X37X. X37X. All spelled out. All spelled Thanks. out. That's easy to remember. Anyway, Jesse Davis, look him up. He's got some cool pictures. This is the Falcon that belongs to uh, a friend, well, a customer who is now a friend that lives in uh, in Louisiana. Shipped it out here with some cooling issues, just here for some problem solving. This was the problem. It had a $139 radiator that you can get online in it. Stuffed into that hole right there. This is actually a portion of the core support that kept it retains the radiator stock hole but there was plenty of opening there so removed this piece which gave us more surface to install a larger radiator I then called a company that makes super efficient radiators and that is be cool be cool ink on Instagram right there uh, I have nothing but be cool in all my cars we took off the mechanical fan and the, and the spacer, and we got dual electric fans in here now. We just filled it full of coolant. Um, did some wiring, routed it around. A couple of relays are mounted over on this side. One relay for each fan. You can make them both work with one fan or one relay, but uh, there's a good chance it's gonna burn up that one relay. The amperage is a little bit much. Okay, a couple pro tips when you're taking the cars apart. You should uh, keep an eye out for stuff that uh, maybe other people may have missed. For example, this vehicle was missing some fender bolts with fender washers holding stuff together. So the core support was sort of floating behind the fenders. And then some of the lower supports were missing hardware. Um, I think that was really about it. That was major on here. Was there anything else major? Jesse missing under this thing? No, mostly just some body hardware that was covered up with fancy painted parts and chrome. Nice. Very cool. So here is a better view of the part that was cut out of the core support to be able to put in a larger radiator to be cool. So after this is all done, we're going to put some heat into it, drive it around with the AC on. If it is still running hotter than I would like. We're gonna remove these patch panels that are part of the TCI front subframe. It looks like this thing has a TCI. I'm not certain it's a TCI, so if you're the manufacturer of this and I'm saying somebody else's name, my bad. But you cut out the shock towers and they give you these brackets or these plates. And I'm gonna put some, if it's still running hot, it's gonna be because hot air cannot get out of the engine bay. So I will pull these off and then put some uh, reverse louvers on them allowing hot air to exit the engine bay, but not allowing water and stuff to pressurize or get into the engine bay from the wheels, because the wheels are turned, throwing hot water up in that area. And there's a rattle on this side we need to find. It's here somewhere, I'll find it. It's the last thing I do. All right, next time you see us, we're going to be on the street making up excuses to the owner about why it was we did that. See you soon. Okay, so one of the issues with the Falcon was uh, temperature. That was the biggest issue. And um, uh, the problem, well, one of the problems was the fact that uh, there's so much hot air in the engine compartment and then you have even more hot air with the fans pulling through the radiator, which is like super heat in the air. And then you have an air intake right there where the air cleaner would be, sucking that hot air into the motor and uh, eating horsepower, just literally just wasting horsepower. Hot air is bad. So I'm going to do a cold air intake, which will just be a hat that sits on top of the radiator, or on top of the, uh, fuel injection unit or carburetor, and then a cold air tube that comes over and a filter above the battery here by the core support. And then in the front of the core support, I will open that up so that more air can get in. 
Um, it's not really that difficult. It's easy to do. Pop off the grill, punch, you know, an array of holes. You don't want to lose any structural integrity, but you do want plenty of air to flow in there. And you don't want it to get preheated by the radiator, which is then heated by the AC condenser and the trans cooler. So there's a stack of stuff out here making heat. And then if you move into a hot, hot environment, you really want to get every little bit of cold air into your motor. One thing about this engine bay is when it's closed, the hood's closed, there's limited spots for the air to get out, down past the headers. And uh, that's really it. It has to go across all this just heat generation and then down past the header. So what I did was uh, this has shock tower uh, uh, delete kit from TCI, I believe. And so they made these uh, plates. Gives you plenty of room to put a big block in here if you want. But it seals the engine bay up really well. Like it goes right down to the lower control, uh, upper control arm. And you know, that's a limited amount of space for air to get out. If you've got this much hot air going through, you know, that's like 30 inches by 20 inches of hot air being forced into the engine bay. And then your exit is through your carburetor or intake. And then a couple of small spots like this. And then the bottom, the motor fits in there pretty tight then uh yeah it's gonna cause a problem so i've drilled some holes they're in the middle if you think about it, the tire is rotating this direction Let's see if i can get my finger on the screen this direction so water is going to be coming up from the back if you drive through water and splashing that way so it's not really going to throw it anywhere it's not like it's back here this is the part that will really get wet and straight up across the top will get wet but uh that's a pretty safe spot. If I would have drilled it back here and the wheels were turned, then obviously it would throw water in or the same thing. If I drill it up here and the wheels are turned when you go through water, it will throw water into the engine bay. But I think that's about your best spot right there. Um, if this isn't enough, this does, if this helps a little, but not enough, I will then take a cutter and I will connect all these together and that will create even more of an opening. But I think that will be more than enough. So that on both sides, and uh, yeah, that will definitely help exit the air. Um, exit the air, good English, huh? Evacuate the air from the engine bay is what I meant to say. Um, that's really it. I changed the thermostat from a uh, 180, which is like the standard for small block Chevy. This is small block Ford. So I changed it to a 160. We're going to see how that works, see if that keeps things a little bit cooler. Um, before, when this vehicle originally came here, you could drive it for maybe 10 minutes and it would get well over 200 degrees. So he would just park it. He told me the miles on the vehicle since he got it six years ago was like 26 miles or something. He only drove it locally and shut it off. Just didn't get to drive it at all. Sat in a warehouse. So now I've already driven it. 30 miles and it, the hottest I got was 197 in bumper to bumper traffic but um, I'm not really going to settle for that I want this thing to run almost too cold because then we're going to turn on the air conditioning and send it to Louisiana where it's relatively warm and humid so that's where we are at it's got the fast fuel injection on it I kind of like that unit um I'm a big Holly fan, but for back in the day, this is an older unit, I believe. That really did the job, did it just fine. All right, so I'm gonna button this thing up and, uh, and hit the cruise. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the road, drive it around, test it. And that will be without the cold air just yet. And then if this proves to be uh, an improvement, then I will uh, step up the cold air. All right, get the wheels on this thing and uh, let, let, let this dog eat. It is uh, Thursday night, heading out to the local spot, Gas Rats little cruise spot for a uh, Really? Couldn't give me an inch? For uh, the local cruise.
it'll be uh, practicing social distancing and uh, just go over to In-N-Out Burger, get some grub, sit in your car and eat. I won't be eating in this car, but there is a temperature after driving for about 10 minutes, 156 degrees. It's a low on the stock cinder right there. You can tell. One of the issues was turn indicators. I took the column apart and saw that somebody had done some modifications to it. I see that they modified the shift ball. It has a little bit of a rattle. I think I'll fix that when I'm at it. Yes, you have a shift lever on it. They welded it up, bonded it, filled it, painted it, whatever they did. Looks great. Um, need to fix the horn. It's missing some pieces, but it actually works now. It's wired all the way up to the top. Blinkers. I don't know if you can see that. Left blinker, right blinker, all working. I didn't check cancellation though. Yeah, look at that. It cancels and everything. And then, uh, yeah, cancels. And life is good. All right, in overdrive, and ready to hit the road at 156 degrees. simulating real-world driving conditions um, this thing had a cooling problem there's only one way to test it and that is to go to In-N-Out Burger and yeah sit in In-N-Out Burger until it cools down what's up man what's up, what let me get a number one with no cheese and no lettuce yeah, can I get fries well done? Fries are gonna be well. Done. And uh, Coke is fine. Coke? You gonna be eating in the park? Uh, yes. Well, no, but yeah. Go for it. Oh. And can I get a name for the order? Lucky. Lucky. So I got a double meat hamburger, no lettuce, it's a fry well, and a medium Coke. I believe you, bud. That's fine, thank you. about 166 167 after sitting in drive through for probably not even now a while but it's in and out that's what happens clear on the left clear on the right That's it. 
All right. I am going to stuff my face with this delicious food. Um, that is a wrap on this project. A couple small things to take care of, um, like tune the remote and stuff like that. But other than that, I'm going to put a little bit of suspension in it and call it a day. Um, thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe, comment, share. For sure, leave comments. I'd like to know what you're thinking. And uh, that's it. This guy's car is on his way back to his house. See you guys.